Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Edward K. Y. Chan Distinguished Lecture. I am Jenny Yun, a year three student of Bachelor of Economics and Finance. This evening, we are delighted to have Dr. Zhu Min, Deputy Managing Director of International Monetary Fund, to give the lecture entitled Capital Flows in a Changing World. Before the lecture begins, May I first invite Professor Eric C. Zhang, Dean Cohen Professor in Finance, Chair of Finance of the Faculty of Business and Economics to deliver his welcoming remarks. Professor Zhang, please. Good evening, Mr. Zhu, Professor Chen, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2012 lecture of the Edward K. C. Chen Distinguished Lecture Series, organized by the School of Business and Economics of the Faculty of Business and Economics. This Distinguished Lecture Series was founded in year 2007 by a group of a prof Professor Edward Chen's former students who studied at Hong Kong U in 1970s as a tribute to Professor Chen. The establishment of this lecture series not only honors Professor Chen's outstanding scholarship and his dedication to teaching excellence, it also demonstrates and reminds of future generation of the important Chinese tradition of respecting one's teachers and mentors. That's what we say, zun shi zhong dao. So this is one of my favorite lecture series. Today, we are very honored to have invited Dr. Zhu to share with us the change and the implication of global capital flow in a world of intensifying financial interconnectedness. Global financial crisis has significantly altered the relative and absolute economic strengths of various economies and has led to widely different implications to different countries. Dr. Zhu will take us, take an in-depth look into economic changes we are experiencing and analyze how these changes are influencing international capital flows with a specific reference to flows from advanced economy to emerging market. He will then assess the related policy implications. Prior to assuming the position of Deputy Managing Director of International Monetary Fund, Dr. Drew served as the Special Advisor to the Managing Director of the IMF. Dr. Drew has extensive experience in high-level financial and fiscal policy administration he was a deputy governor of the People's Bank of China, responsible for international affairs, policy research, and credit information. Dr. Zhu is also a seasoned banker. He has held various positions at the Bank of China, including that of Group Executive Vice President, which carries a diversified portfolio, including finance, Treasury, risk management, internal control, legal and compliance, and strategy and research. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Zhu. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction and welcome. And uh, thank you also very much for the invitation. 
And it's absolutely a privilege and honor to be here to speak to this very distinguished audience and also to have a chance to go back to university. It's always a great feeling to go, go back to school. And I particularly like this Zun Si Zhong Dao. I think it's an absolutely important principle for everyone in his or her life. Today, I would like to talk about capture flaws in a changing world. So basically, I always say three issues. The first issue is the changing world, and I would say in what aspects in the world the world is changing, and the second issue is obvious, the key issue is how the capital flow moves in a changing world, and the third issue is what the policy we recommend and uh, for the members or authorities to take to dealing with capital flows in today's situations. We're really living in a changing world, particularly through this financial crisis. The world really experienced some fundamental changes in a structure sense. So I'm going to describe a few things particularly related to the topic today, particularly with the capital flow. The first issue is the world today is much more interconnected than any time before. This is the map. This is a very classical map, very much pictured by geographical areas. We see this is very normal. But if we weigh this map, map by trade, you will see very different pictures as well. So what we see is here, you will see the American, US is still very strong here, and the China become also very big. But if you're looking for the Russian, Russian is still relatively small. This is a global trade map, map. So if you take the whole economy weighted by trade, that's the map we see. It's a complete different map. It's emphasized on the trade link in the world. And meanwhile, in 20 years of horizons, from 19, in 30 years of horizons actually, from 1990 today, the trade link increased actually 70%. The, the whole world is ever linked by trade. If the same thing we will see, this is the trade world, but if you're looking for the financial world, it can be very different world as well. If you're looking for the financial world, the world changes further. China becomes very small. And the Russian is even smaller here. But US is the whole European area become very important. This is the financial world today. So you will see the whole Asia area become rather small in terms of a financial position in the whole world. Still, if we go back, I don't know whether we can go back. If we go back a little, little back, you will see that. This is the classical map. You will see the whole, how this whole map change. When we move into the trade war, you will see how these things change. It's really changed the image of the whole thing. This, the, this is the trade war. It's, it's very much the war weighted by global trade. Uh, you see, Europe is still important, but still relatively small here. In this area, you could, in this area, still relatively small, right? But China is obviously is very big here. Then the financial section, it's a completely different world. It's a trade session. This is a financial world. You will see the whole world, European become ever important. The whole European area is more important I guess I don't have a battery. <laughs> I don't know, may, maybe I touched the wrong button. C can I get a battery or? I'll go back, thank okay. you. Yeah. And you, you see this is financial world is completely different. In the 30 years horizon, 
the world is much more connected by financial sectors, increase also more than 70%, around 8%, 80% in the 30 years horizons. And the further, we do the, the inter, is that quite excellent? Thank you. Yeah. Further, but this is not the only whole thing. The most interesting we found in the 20 years, the world really grouped them together in a complete different picture we can ever imagine before. Because it's interconnectedness. Some part close more linked with some other parts. Let's try to see those things. This is the normal map we see, right? This is the, still the classical map we see every day. But this is the firm which the economists and countries we, we observe from those maps. This map, you know, this very flags as the name the, the countries as well. This is a geographical map. But if you're looking for the interconnectedness among these countries, you probably will see a quite different picture. This is still just see these countries around the world, and they change. They reposition themselves in terms of the linkage between themselves. So who are they? Let's look about that. This is a very much advanced economy with the whole circle here, there's a whole advanced economy. You will say, yes, what's the new advanced economy always connected to each other? No, that's not the case. For example, even 10 years ago in Europe, there are two centers. The north centers are very much centered by German and the Dutch and a few, few nor the Sweden's and northern European countries. And the southern is the centers with French and the Italian economies as well. In 10 years of horizons, the European really moving from two centers into one center. Into one center in the sense they have a more closely shared business cycle. They have a more closely shared policy instruments. They have a more close and shared linkage between those economies. And the US also joined the group so they become the whole partner, it's advanced economy, get together. So who are the others? Then we have Asia. This is a classical Asia, the, the countries in the region will see they group them together. That's, you say, what's new. But it probably will surprise you to see Brazil. Brazil here today is belong to the Asia. You probably were surprised to see this is Chile here into the interconnectedness. They belong to the Asia. And the Mexico is belong to the advanced economy circle. It is absolutely amazed to see today in the Latin American actually divided by two groups by the, the Panama Cloy. At the northern part of Kanai, it's a more heavy business cycle associates with the, 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 the US, so they go with the advanced economy cycle. And in the southern part of Panama Kanai, the whole economic activity is much more close with Asia, particularly emerging Asia, as well. So there, there's other groups. The third group is the oil, the oil group. Can you see that? I'm sorry. That's okay, the people from the back. Can we turn the lights a little bit? Of? It's difficult. It's too light. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know whether, whether the people from the back can see it. But if you're looking for the oil, it's all the oil. There, there, there's, a, there's a Nigeria. This is Nigeria from, from the red top. This is Nigeria here. This is Nigeria here. This is Kazakhstan here. Right? This is Russian here. This is Saudi here. So it is not 
economically, the world is not defined by ge ge geographic situations. It's rather by the internal linkage and how do they link together. So if you're looking for the interconnectedness, number one, I think the previous two slide shows, the world is much closer interlinked to each other. And the world today is more, it groups themselves into the three I call the clusters. One cluster is the advanced economy, obviously, and the second one is the energy group uh, with all the oil countries, and the third group is Asia. And there are a few more countries that also goes to the, the Asian region as well. We see even Oman, Qatar, and the Gambia's countries. You know, all those countries belong to the Asia circles. A big, a big, Asian cluster is forming, including Brazil, Chile. Uh, in some degree, including South Africa, and including Tanzania. So the countries you, 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 you cannot imagine, but in terms of business, in terms of trade, in terms of business cycle, in terms of policy. And it's very different countries today, they're moving to the together. This is a really a big and a fundamental change of today's world. It's obviously a very important part to define today's capital flow. The second issue is the world is ever interconnected because we can tell from the stronger correlations among different markets. You can see from 2003 to 2012, the equity market, the currency market, and the bonds market are much more close to link to each other now. Uh, I guess people in the back cannot see the clear, the color, I'm sorry about that. But you will see them bumping, moving each other, but the overall, this is the correlation, you see how this equity market linked to each other, the movements, the co-movements move to each other. And uh, there's a particular version, is a correlation between the regional equities. Let me pick one thing, if, we, if I can. It's uh, the Latin American to emerging Asia, which is the yellow color, it's a little green. Can I see? Oh, sorry, I cannot see it. Actually, it is the color from here from roughly 0.4%, it goes all the way bumping, bumping to here from 0.8%. So in not very long, actually, in roughly less than 10 years, less than 10 years, the Latin American equity market, the co-movements with emerging Asian equity market increase from 40% to 82%. You can never imagine that could happen before. It's completely break all the geographic regions and issues. And also there are a few other issues on the strong correlations and given the picture is not all clear for the people there, I'm not going to go through too much things. But this